What's up, what's up, and welcome to another episode, Master Moats Film Session. And today, we got to talk about Mark Robinson, because you sleep if you thought I was going to let him play in the game and play the way that he did and expect me, a linebacker lover, to not talk about his performance? Come on, man. Let's not waste any time, man. That's the young fella right there, 93. I'm going to play it in full speed. After that, I'm going to break it down. Make sure you go ahead and hit that like button also. While we're letting this play proceed. Oh, baby, baby, baby. Look like we got us one here. Looks like we got us one. So, first off, man, talking about the formation or uh, the defense that these Steelers are playing. They're in their base unit, but we see something very different here in the amount of down defensive linemen. We have one, Larry Ogunjobi, two, Montrevis Adams, three, Cam Hayward. For DeMarvin Leal. That's not a defense that we're typically running, right? Or typically accustomed to running here in Pittsburgh. How many linebackers do we have? Alex Highsmith, that's one. Mark Robinson, two. TJ and Robert Spillane. So essentially, we are running a 4 4 defense right here. And the reason why we are doing that, obviously, is because of the Baltimore Ravens and what they like to do in terms of just running the ball. But the thing that I like is this, man. With this particular formation, it has to lay out the box because there are two receivers on the outside. So think of it two by two in the sense of one, two receivers on that side or eligible receivers. And then it's going to be two eligible receivers outside the screen right here. Which you can see from more of the, uh, the sideline copy. So with that, Mark understands initially he's balanced up. But because of this motion right here, you're getting Mark doing what? Correcting his alignment because now we're looking at potential three by one. And wherever you're getting three by one in the sense of three eligible receivers on this side, we said one and the two guys that were already out here. And it's just one guy on the back side. So numbers wise, you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff coming over this way based on how the formation is right now. I'm not saying that they can't grow to that, but right here is letting you know that hey man there's not a lot that can go over there outside of what cool and on this particular play they're trying to influence mark to go to his left this side <clears throat> and that's why you get the motion man the fast motion along with what you got three bodies here one two three in terms of these interior uh, offensive linemen also giving the illusion that this play is only going to mark's left but the telltale sign is this one two you have two pullers okay pullers will always take precedent whenever you're playing in this defense or just playing linebacker in general man you read your triangles you read your keys but more importantly a big key is the guard if the guard is pulling you want to have eyes on that you want to follow that more than likely and right here we're getting the guard going where he's going this direction while everything else is fast flow here so it's understandable for mark to <clears throat> take that initial step to his left but the thing that i like is this he is athletic enough and he plays hard enough. <clears throat> he's athletic enough and he plays hard enough that with this play, even though technically right now he's on, you know, a little bit too far outside of where the ball is, he is athletic enough and plays hard enough that he's going to get back in on this thing all the way to the front side where the play is actually designed to go to meet this guy one-on-one -on -one in the hole and ultimately make a big-time tackle where clearly you saw, man, it wasn't a lot of other people over there. So if he misses that or doesn't react back fast enough, that ball is going to be up on Minka Fitzpatrick, the safety, in no time. But that's a good thing, like I said, from Mark right here, man, just in the sense of, yeah, you're fast with it, right? You're aggressive. It's your first snap, man. It's your first time starting in the level, at this level. So I anticipate or I expect him to have a hard reaction to some of this misdirection type stuff. But eventually he'll get to the point where he's not going to react as hard to some of that pre-snap stuff. But either way, even right now in the interim, with him overreacting, so to speak, to see him be able to put a foot in the ground, have the effort, athletic ability, and the desire to actually go over here and finish it, and then actually go ahead and do that one-on-one -on -one against the J.K. Diamonds, man, that is very, very impressive. So, let's go 93. But wait, there's more. Now, in this particular play, we're going to get a chance to see Mark with some of his coverage responsibilities. So, right here... That's the young fellow Mark Robinson. I played at full speed, and after that, I will break it down. But man, very impressed with what I saw from him, man. Um, as he continues to get his role expanded, continues to play more and more snaps, man. 
he just continues to flash, man, and continues to be productive, and that's what you want at this level. So let's talk about it. Um, once again, you're getting that big body personnel grouping by the Steelers on defense, right? Let's count the guys up. We got DeMarvin Leal. We got Larry Ogunjobu. We got Montrevis. We got Killer Cam. That is four down D linemen. We got TJ Watt circled up with the hand down 90, or excuse me, over here on the opposite side, Alex Highsmith. There you go, Mark Robinson. And then they have Robert Spillane out there isolated playing that man-to-man Kona. -man Don't you love that? But that is a part of just the defense. You know, some of the things that you have to like and not like about this thing. But all they're playing is man-to-man -man coverage right here. And with this, Mark is on the off-ball tight end. You have Edmonds, who is going to be on the point man on the tight end, all right? And they communicated that pre-snap. Uh, I think you can see a little bit of it on the camera, but they talk about it pre-snap. So the thing I like initially is this, man. He knows it's empty, so you don't have really a real true run threat outside of the QB draw. But with the QB draw, you're anticipating your D lineman taking care of that. So for Mark, he just has to have his eyes on his work right there, that tight end, because at the interior part you got Edmonds and that's the guy that he's going to be worried about all right I believe that's Mark Andrews right there so with Mark Robinson he understands his job in terms of carrying out the assignment did he check that box off yes like that a lot the other thing I like is this okay ball thrown don't just stand there and watch it go be a playmaker go get involved with this thing I like that element as well in terms of making the tackle here so when we talk about the positive on this particular play I like it a lot in the sense of number one he knew what he was supposed to do he did execute that part and then he went out there and actually was an overachiever and made the tackle to finish the playoff all right now when we're talking about coaching points here how would i critique it obviously i get a chance to see this Edmonds kind of communicating with marks letting him know how he wants to align on it how he wants to play on that and that's fine i don't look at that as a negative per se just look at that as a younger guy taking the advice from the old guy and that's what you're supposed to do you don't want to fuss a fight about who's the matchup and things like that so good there his first step i think is fine this is the only thing that i would say in terms of critiquing it just make sure because right now his eyes are on the quarterback but this is man-to-man -man coverage so in man-to-man -man, unless you can touch that receiver you don't want to have your eyes off of that receiver just because in the sense that, man, this is a lot of space right here, all right? You throw that ball out there, you're just making it a little bit more difficult than it would need to be. But in this particular case, it didn't hurt him. It didn't necessarily kill him because of, number one, the uh, throw, in terms of being Tyler Huntley, and in terms of the threat of that receiver trying to outrun him. I don't think that at this part of the game, he really felt that that was going to be an issue. So with that being the case and the speed of it, that's fine. But if this play were to continue and he does not go to mark, the further this guy keeps drifting away because his eyes are in the backfield, that could become an issue. Just in terms of some of the little details of your job of being in cover and stuff like that but outside of that man i definitely love what i saw here in terms of him getting back in on this thing to finish it off and ultimately man just trying to make a play right here on the ball or excuse me make a play um early in this game but love this dude's effort love this dude's energy man he plays with his hair on fire <laughs> the whole time you see him on the field he's trying to make a play man and that's definitely what i love about this young guy right here but i got one more play i want y'all to see just stick with me. one more play all right, now we're down to this last play. And like I said, man, I really like this just because you can see him just putting together everything that makes Mark unique in the sense of his speed, his toughness, his smarts as well, though, and just overall physicality. So let's play this play right now, full speed, and after that, we'll talk about it. All righty. So defensively, once again, they're in their exact same formation. You got 93, middle of the field. I don't know if I circled him the first time or not, but make sure I do it again just to keep it consistent because I'm big on consistency. Y'all know that, all right? So with that, though, like we talked about the four down D linemen along with the four uh, linebackers right here. Now, I'm not sure exactly the rules of how they're playing this, but I wasn't sure in the sense of like 98 where he was going, if he's supposed to stay over here or if he's traveling with him. When we were when I was playing in his defense, we didn't do a lot of this 4-4 look. Um yeah and traditionally in the four fours that i played in or that we've used at times with other places didn't have a lot of guys like traveling to go over there but that could be match it related because this is an extra offense alignment so that could be the biggest reason why 98 is doing what 98 is doing right now in the sense of going with this guy but either way for mark 
he's treating this as one-on-one because ultimately one back one gap and for coverage purposes that's going to be his man right now just based on him being in the uh the dot alignment okay but the thing that i like is this man so once again where do we see the first play first play he had misdirection right fast flow in terms of the motion and he overreacted crazily but then he was able to get back once he saw the pullers and make that play this time they're running a very similar concept but what he's not overreacting to it now because he's played a couple snaps in this thing now instead of him being over here in his front side b gap and having to rock back to this back side b <clears throat> now he's just sitting right here where he needed to be the first time patience don't overrun it and now because he didn't come all the way over here it doesn't have to be you know you run 10 yards here 10 yards here make a move make the play now he has a better angle he sees it easier and the thing that i like also is this with his smarts he understands that when you're a smarter player it doesn't always have to be physical labor right here he has the option of hat and hands this d uh this um offensive tackle right here who's obviously a big guy probably going you know hurt him a little bit take some years off his uh you know his body <laughs> but he takes the alternative route which is the smart route right here and just dips his shoulder and goes and makes the play because at the end of the day you're not going to get paid for blowing up offensive alignment you get paid for making tackles and that's ultimately what he does right here excellent job in the sense of just growing man this is all in the same play but literally <clears throat> instead of him overreacting and overrunning and having to come back and make a herculean effort to make a play now you see that growth and when you talk about him being able to pick this up this fast in the same game that is very impressive ladies and gentlemen and that's one of the things that i've been really impressed with when watching 93 on tape he doesn't make a ton of the same mistakes twice you know like we just talked about you see him overrun something slightly he picked it up the second time around i think he takes coaching really well i love his effort in terms of how hard he plays and he's just a productive player so, like I said, you know, I'm a fan of 93, man. Y'all let me know your thoughts on him, though, man. And, uh, you know, what you think the future holds for him in our defense. But either way, you know, I appreciate you for tuning in. And until next time, baby, peace.